Thank, thank you very much, Yaron. I would continue with Ron Manners uh, from Australia, giving his perspective. And uh, yes, seven minutes because the uh, minister is coming in. Uh, thank you, Barbara. I, uh, I promised to uh, have a one hour speech, but I promised Barbara that I'll cut it down to seven minutes. But the long version will be up on our mancal.org website uh, for all to enjoy. Now, uh, this is my second trip to Ukraine. And uh, the first was two years ago, and I must say it's got a much more peaceful feel about it this time. So, and you've made some starts on your reforms, that's fantastic. In Australia, we've made some starts on our reforms, but we're very slow. Now, Australia, Australia's claim to fame is not just that we came second to Ukraine in the Eurovision contest. <laughs> There's more to it than that. Australia really had a small but significant part to play in introducing flat rate taxation to firstly Estonia, which then flooded to other, other European countries. We've never been able to simplify our tax system. It's so complex that I don't know a single Australian that can tell me how much they, tax they pay. Uh, the, um, uh, the, it, the challenge is uh, to reform a system, and it's a tough challenge. And I, I think back at a quotation that Ronald Reagan gave, gave some many years ago, and I'll just borrow this, it goes back. There have been revolutions before and since ours, but those revolutions simply exchanged one set of rulers for another. Ours must be a revolution that changes the very concept of government. That rings true for Ukraine and it rings true for Australia. Um, I, uh, the taxation, uh, the, 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 the title of the session is Tax and Death, is death, death and Taxes. I think there's an obvious reason why it's chosen, that title is chosen, because I'm cynical of governments and governments excel. Governments are extremely good at only two things. One is stealing money from their own people, which is taxation, and the other thing is killing people, and not other people, and killing their own people. They're the two things that government excels in, so it's a pretty good title for today's session. Taxation is a complex thing. I find it easier to explain to children all about taxation. I say to children, um, uh, if you had some ice cream and a stranger came up to you and wanted to taste your ice cream and they asked politely, what would you do? And they say, well, I'd let them taste my ice cream. Then I say, but if a stranger came up to you and immediately took half of your ice cream, what would you do? And they think, ah, I'd hide my ice cream so they could never do that again. And I say, you understand taxation perfectly. The, uh, there's many threats today uh, to our civilization. Taxation is one of them where you're deprived of the outcome of your uh, endeavors. The other, th the other threat, I think, is the USA. And that's a pretty tall thing to make. But the USA have hit us with global financial crisis. They've hit us with printing money. They've hit us with all sorts of things. And now they're hitting us with this thing called FATCA, which I think will probably be discussed in more detail, where they're imposing their rules and regulations on the rest of the world. Now, I came across, with our company, I came across FATCA about two months back and I'm wondering why our two senior people were spending about two weeks filling in forms. We were doing a, a, reasonable, a reasonably simple transaction with Europe. And they said, we're filling in all the FATCA, American regulatory forms. I said, what's that got to do with us? I said, it's compulsory. No one in the world can deal with anyone in the world without complying to all the US regulations well. Isn't that slowing things down? It's turning it around to the benefit of the USA because the money is starting to flow back into the USA and you get areas in the USA like South Dakota who become virtually a, a tax haven compared with the rest of the world. So the huge amount of money is going to flow back to the US. Uh, there's one guy here that in the Financial Times state, states that it will be... Uh, uh, hundreds of billions of dollars by the end of this year that will flow back into the US. So we know why they're doing all this. 
it's a pity. It's going to slow us down and we've got to work hard. There are things we can do. We know it's worthwhile working for because there was a model that the USA created once where there was maximum prosperity when they deregulated and we had free enterprise and the world was better for it. But now it's slowing down, so we've got to find a way around this. The things we can do is absolutely look at everything we do. We've got to look at that in business anyway today. If we just do things like the way our parents did or the forebears or the previous people did it, we'll fail. It's as simple as that. We've just got to find a simple way. We go through and strip out all the way, all the things that we don't need to do and get rid of them. The, um, the, my, one of my mentors told me, for we, we want change. We, there's four ways, exactly four ways to bring about change. One is education. One is uh, civil disobedience. The other is uh, physical violence or war. And we don't want that. The other thing is uh, political change. Uh, I've chosen really um, the e e the educational and uh, and the civil disobedience, and I'll just mention a couple of there's a couple of models of civil disobedience. One is Sir John Cowperthwaite, who was sent by England to run the colony of Hong Kong some years ago, and uh, he was the finance secretary there, and he suddenly decided he was not he refused to send any statistics back to England, so England didn't know what was going on in Hong Kong and they said you're in charge of Hong Kong you're responsible to us you must send us statistics st statistics all those numbers he said no way the minute you get hold of all those statistics you will start interfering with our economy so the economy of Hong Kong boomed and they still refused to send back well they right through the year to June 1997 they refused to send statistics back to to the to the United Kingdom and it was Hong Kong secret minimum bureaucracy I find there's lots of other things to do we uh, we our company's been going 120 years which is a long time in Australia it's six years older than the flag or the Australian Constitution and I said the other day that our company would not have survived if we had have filled in all of the government forms that were given to us or paid all the taxes that we're supposed to pay it's as simple as that you must have civil disobedience question things I was running a mining company some years ago and I saw people filling in forms on what we were doing, how we were spending, what sort of drilling we were doing, and I, I calculated the cost of filling that government for me. It was fifteen thousand dollars, U.S. dollars, so much. Fifteen thousand dollars. I said, "This is not. We're not here to fill government forms. And we're here to find gold mines and make a dividend for the shareholders." And they said, "Oh, we have to do this. We'll be fined." And I said, "Read the bottom line." I got them to read the bottom line, and the fine was a hundred dollars. So I said. Put them in the bin. Every time those government statistics arrive, we'll put them in the bin. And they did it. So we saved fifteen thousand dollars every time there was a uh, there was a there was a uh, there was a form to be filled in. You must question these things. Just don't go along with it. Now, there's a lot of it's a long story here, but I I think uh, I've got an engineering background, and I like measuring things. I like measuring the success, success of different individuals of different com companies and in the case of what trip around this time of various countries where you can pick up ideas you can transport one idea from another country it's fantastic and I think we uh, there's a lot of indexes that are published now property rights indexes uh, economic freedom indexes but I think one of my old heroes Frederick Hayek uh, the Austrian econo economist he used to have an index, index of his own where he said that a good civilization is one where people will flee to, and a bad civilization is one where people will flee from. So it's a way of measuring, and if we could work hard on liberalizing and making trade, making it easier for us to deal with each other and be understanding like that, we'll have more people coming to your country to trade, and we'll have more people coming to our country to trade. It's a huge responsibility. And, uh, and the worst enemy of, of it all, probably, is that we forget. We forget the results of bad policies. We wonder how 
bad people get to the top and bad policies remain, but there's a school of thought in ec ec economics called the public choice theory that explains the concentrated benefits go to the people that work harder to ensure that legislation gets passed or the bad laws remain. The costs are spread over all the people like us, so we never really march in the streets. We just put up with it. So there's a huge responsibility uh, and, and our civilization, our civil society, the whole future of it rests on the shoulders of people like us. So good luck and be relentless in your pursuit. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Ron. I gave you many more minutes than you had asked, than we had agreed on. So, of course, it's, <laughs> it's always a deal that you can make.